today. Sorry, I have bad connection, I think. Hope, hopefully it work. Um, I wanted to ask you, how did we get here? Um, what was the processes that led to the release of this great album? Uh, th thanks. Well, it was like the pa pandemic, you know, the COVID pa pandemic. I work as a freelance guitarist in Sweden with different pop backs. I work as a musical musical director and I lost all my jobs like overnight. Everything was lost. <laughs> it was it was crazy. And I almost lost my passion for, you know, guitar, for music and everything like that. And when the summer came, I thought, you know, th th this doesn't work. I have to play the guitar. I have to get going. And I contacted a few friends who I knew wrote music for Jolan Turner. Hmm. Uh, he, he needed some songs for his album. So I contacted them, my friends, and asked, this, hey, guys, can I come and write some songs with you? Uh, I always loved Joe and his voice. It's like, you know, my my favorite singer of all time. And they told me, yeah, come along, come along. And we wrote a few songs for, for Joe. But it, it took like too long. It took like almost a year to get, you know, a bunch of songs ready for him. And we, we emailed him and he was polite and told us, yeah, well, this sounds great, but the album's full. And we, ah, OK, we, we understand. But are you interested in maybe doing an album with us? Because we have a few songs now that I, we think are quite good. And he told mm -hmm. us politely, ah, well, well, get the finance financing and we'll talk and I contacted like a few labels and we got connected with S Rock Music and Orca the owner of S Rock Music he listened to to our songs my songs and it told me well this sounds great but I don't want the old and to sing on the album and I, I thought okay you must be crazy it's like the best, <laughs> right. best singer in the world. But he, he told me, Rolly, if you put together a band with, you know, you know, like every musician in Sweden, put together a band with, with the best guys you know, put the be uh, together a band with your friends, then we can get, get this thing going. If you like do an album with Joe, it's just going to be another project. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to get to perform live. You, I, I'm not going to get my money back, he told me. And after a while, when I thought about what he said, I, he was completely right. I need to get a band together with my friends. We get need to get out on, you know, on stage, play live, perform. So I called Robert van der Svahn, who is a good friend of mine and my neighbor and an excellent singer. Uh, he had cancer in his throat at the time, but was like able to sing all the demos for for our remedy songs. And he's a good friend of mine. So I called Robert. I called Georg Hanstein Egg from Dynasty. Mm -hmm. I called Andreas Basmark from Royal Hunt, and Jonas Öyval from Tiamat. And we made this album together. It's like, you know, a, a COVID project that escalated totally <laughs> into something different. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it was the pa pandemic that made this. And the album has such a great 80s feel to it. You know, um, I, 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 I love the music from the 80s. That's, that's why, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you, as far as the writing process for you, yeah. Um, do uh, do the riffs come, and then uh, you just build upon it, and then the lyrics follow, or how does the process work for you? Yeah, well, the lyrics always been hard for me. You know, English is not my mother's tongue, and I'm a guitarist, so you know, riff. It's always been easier to like create songs on the guitar for me. So that's like almost every time I start on the guitar, almost every time. And I have a friend who's an excellent songwriter, Sören Kronqvist, together on this project. 
but he he's not a guitarist he's not like a musician at all he's like a, a, a music machine <laughs> so <laughs> when we write music he, he sits beside me and you know plays air guitar he, mm. he like hums how he, in his head he wants to guitar riff the sound and that's like a crazy process but it works so I, I play guitar and he he, he likes uh, ah, I don't like that you need to do a little more like dun, 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 dun. and he, <laughs> he, he, he he makes sounds for me and after that we like make a riff and uh, we create a song and after we have like the riff and the the you know bass for the song i create mm -hmm. top line i create melodies and, and lyrics after that so that's like mainly how it works uh sometimes it i have a different approach like thunder in the dark i wrote on the road <clears throat> when i was touring with Yeor and andreas Passmark. And I just got like a, you know, a, I was sitting in, in the car and I got this idea for the song. And after that, I, I wrote the lyrics. So that was a different process. I wrote the lyrics and then the song. Wow. Uh, but uh, mainly I go for the guitar and the riffs first. And after that, do the rest. And uh, another question I want to ask you is, uh... Uh, one, how did the video go for the opening track? And two, uh, if you could talk, speak on the gold guitar you play in that video. Yeah, the golden guitar, you, you saw it. Yeah. And it, like, like my own signature model. I have, I'm in Finland now on vacation, so I only have my black guitar here with me. But I have like one black remedy guitar and one golden guitar. Uh, and, you know, for the video, I contacted my friends, uh, Matthias and Mark. They're like the best in the business in Sweden for for videos. They make, you know, they make movies. They do <laughs> a lot of great stuff that you see on HBO, Netflix, Via Play, and, and so on. So they like they're like great. So I c contacted them and told me told them about this project. I told them that we're aiming for for glory <laughs> but let's see how it goes uh, and they jumped aboard they're like good friends of mine and they told me yeah let's do this together and see how it goes so you know the budget was like not that extreme but they made it extremely good uh, so they worked their asses off and didn't <laughs> get any, any payment at all but uh, hopefully that's okay. They're, they are friends of mine. And the Golden Guitar, it's like uh, my own signature model, which I made together with Tyster Guitars here in Finland. An excellent guitar builder. Excellent guitar builder. Uh, I was ho at home uh, with uh, Jim Westerlund from One Desire, like two summers ago. And we were a bit drunk and I played a guitar uh, that I thought was a PRS guitar uh, at the moment. <laughs> and the day after when we woke up, I asked him, you know, the, the white guitar that I played, what, it's, it felt great. What was it? Mm -hmm. And he told me, well, it's a, it's a Finnish guitar builder. His name is Taisto. He builds excellent guitars. Okay. <laughs> and I contacted uh, Taisto immediately. I, I called him up and I, I said, okay, you your instruments are great. Would you like to do a thing together? And that's uh, yeah, that's how it went. We I, I contacted him and told him, I love your guitars. Would you mind making me a signature model? And he did. So so it's a remedy guitar. I have one black, I have one golden, and soon a third. It looks uh, very comfortable to play. It's and, excellent. Uh, it's excellent. You should try it. And I also want to ask you about the guitar. Uh, yeah. What were what were some of the influences you had on the model? Yeah. Well, it's based on his model, the VR twenty five. Uh huh. But I, I, but I'm like you know, I'm not really a, a heavy metal 
guitarists. I, I come from, uh, you know, I listen to Brian May and stuff like that. So I have a different approach. And I, as a freelance guitarist, I always used a Strat or a Telecaster or something like that. And mm-hmm. they're like, you know, a, a bit more rough. They have more, <laughs> so it, you know, the neck is not that thin. They're not that easy, easy going and easy to play. So it, it's like a, a hybrid from a, like a PRS metal guitar. Mm-hmm. The neck is a bit thicker. I want it to feel like more wood. And, and you know, but here, everything here, the switch and the knobs are like, like on a Strat. Mm-hmm. So I, I made it, it's like a guitar for me. It's like a, a heavy metal guitar, but with Strat influences. So it's like a, a, a perfect guitar for me. And the golden one with the whammy bar, it's my best guitar ever. I can't, I can't <laughs> understand how Tyson does the, uh, these things. You know, it's like a one man show here in Finland. He makes excellent guitars. Yeah, it's a beautiful guitar as well. I and mean, thanks. It's just, it has a great look to it as well. Thanks, thanks. It's like the, the, the golden color is from Volvo cars. <laughs> we had a long discussion. How, how, how would we make the, the perfect golden touch? And we tried a do, uh, dozen of different colors, but it's like the color that Volvo uses for it, for its cars. So it's a, a Volvo color. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Now, I also wanted to ask you, uh, if you could speak on the album artwork and the artist that was involved in the artwork. Yeah, well, the, the eye, I love the eye, and it, it was mm-hmm. Lou De Lawrence, uh, a guy that my, my record company knew. Uh, they contacted him, and I gave him all the photos, all the material that we had from the video and from, from our live gigs and so on. And it's the eye from the actress in our first video. I want to have it all. Mm-hmm. In a scene when she's doing her makeup, he's like doing her eyes or something. Yeah. And he 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 like took that photo from from that scene and made a spider in the eye. And that's mainly the inspiration for Thunder in the Dark. There's something in the uh, with Thunder in the Dark, something that your eyes won't see. And that's mm-hmm. like the the name of, of the album now. So it was Ludde who made this layout, and I, I think it's excellent. I love it. I love it. And I also want to ask you um, the name Remedy. It, yeah. What, did you come up with the name because it was actually a remedy for what you was going through during the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It was, and also my son's name. He, he's in the room here, <laughs> playing yeah. some some stu- gaming stuff. His name is Remy, so it's like quite, you know, oh, yeah. close call. <laughs> and uh, speaking of guitar playing, I want to ask yeah. you: At what age did your journey start, and how did you progress in your training? I was like. 10 years old. I, I'm in Finland now on vacation. I live in Stockholm, Sweden, but I, I'm here in Finland now at, in my hometown, hometown. And in this room, when I was 10 years old, I heard Mark Knopfler play Money for Nothing. Ah. And I just, you know, I was a child, but I, I couldn't understand the sound. What, what is this? I need to learn to, <laughs> to do this. And that was like the, 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 thing that got me started. I heard Mark Knopfler play and, you know, I, this is on the countryside. So, you know, to start playing guitar wasn't that easy. So it took a year before I found a guitar course. And when I was about 11, I, I could start to, you know, get a guitar teacher and get going. And uh, yeah, it was, it was hard work at the time, you know, this was in the early 90s, a, mm-hmm. end of the 80s, so it, you didn't have YouTube or anything. I was on my own here in the <laughs> Finnish woods trying to manage. Uh, yeah, but that was what got me started. I heard Mark Knopfler play, play 
on it for nothing. And also, it has a, I have a cousin who's like 10 years older than me, than me. And he had a band. And they played like, you know, rainbow covers, Deep Purple stuff. So I, I went every night. I took my bicycle over to their rehearsal and uh, listened to, to, you know, you know, when when I heard Mon no, when I heard Smoke on the Water for the first time, I was like, "Man, this is <laughs> this is right. the shit." Uh, and and uh, you know that that was what got me going. Uh, I heard guitar and I loved the sound of electric guitar, uh, and it was amazing. And at the same time, you know, it was big inspiration for me. I saw Back to the Future. I was like a little kid then, but you know, it was really cool to see him play play Johnny Be Good on stage. Yes, and I think that had a big influence on on my generation that movie, uh, and it got me going. But after that, it was like, you know, Europe came, and and in this same room, I heard Final Countdown for the first time. Mm. My older bro brother played it on on. He had a, a little player here in this corner. <laughs> Uh, and you know that had such an impact on me. I it's it was so amazing, you know, to hear the synthesizer, the the guitar solo was amazing, and everything. So it it was like here in in the north in Sweden, Finland, it it happened so much. You know, when the mountain came, every, sure. everything happened here. So it was, for me, it was. Amazing. Uh, I didn't know how to play anything of it, but I loved how it sound, sounded. And uh, that was what got me started. Uh, I, I heard the guitar and, and couldn't, like, I couldn't get enough. I loved it. And I know, like, with me, the first time I heard Rising Force, it just was like, ah, whoa. Mind blowing. Yes. yes. It's yes, just an yeah. unbelievable experience. I'm quite yeah, a bit yeah. older than you. My first influences was uh, um, when I was very young, I was a Beatles fan. And then in 76, yeah. a buddy of mine came over with Kiss Destroyer. Yeah. And once Amazing. I got the visual and the sound, it was, and then I saw Ace, the way he staggered on stage and yeah. everything. Amazing. He was my big influence to pick up a guitar. <laughs> great, great, great. Um, I also also wanted to ask you is uh, what can we look for next from Remedy? What's next in the works? Yeah, well, well, for me now it's mainly to get you know on on stage. We want to play live in front of an audience. That's like the main thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to get this band going. I think we have a bunch of great songs, and the band is great. You know, Robert, our singer, he sings just as good live as he does on on this record so uh, i want people to see him i want uh, the world to see us and hopefully they'll like what they see i'm sure that they will because this album is great top to bottom oh thank one you very the, much when i heard it one of the things that that one of the first things that came to my mind was i just got done releasing my top 38 of the year and i'm like damn i wish i would listen to that album before <laughs> i can do the top 38. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. But you know, we, we made it like old school. I, uh, old school. I, I grew up with, like I told you, Deep Purple, Rainbow, also ACDs and stuff like that. And I, one thing I have now with music, I don't get goosebumps that often anymore because it's too perfect. You know, everything is like edited with the computer and it's like made to perfection with the computer. So. On this album, it's not perfect. I wanted to have, you know, I wanted to have to, to us to have a groove. I wanted us to be alive. Sure. So, so what we have on this album is like good takes. Not, it's not perfect. It's like good takes. When Robert sings, it's pure good takes of him in the studio. And the same thing with my guitars, with Gior's drums. Everything is like made the old school way way with no computer editing whatsoever we want it to sound like raw and like i think music should sound like it should be alive 
it shouldn't sure. be like edited to perfection. It should absolutely they have to be uh, an edge. And I also want to ask you, you've had a great career. I wanted to ask you um, if you could pick your proudest moment as to date. Would you say that this release is one of them? Yeah, I, yeah, I would. I would. This is like the first time I get to do my own thing. I've been like a hired gun for many things, and I was also proud proud when I made it through all the auditions and 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 got chosen by Brian May and Roger Taylor for for the Queen musical. That was like a big moment for me when I was young uh, to play "We Will Rock You," and they chose me. Uh, but this is like a different thing, you know, I, I've been touring with different artists, I've been doing big shows, but, you know, this is something else. This is, yeah. this is my music, this is how it sounds when I play guitar on my own, this is how it sounds when I write music, and this is how my band sounds, and I, I, hopefully people will, uh, will like it. I love it. Uh, <laughs> absolutely, I do as well. I also wanted to ask you, um, along your journey, what, what has been the best advice that has been given to you along your way? Ooh, that's a difficult question, but but something that's that I learned is, you know, with, with this album now, I play like I do. Uh, and one thing I learned, you know, I grew up trying to imitate guitarists. And you'll never be able to play like Yngwie Malmsteen. You'll never be able to play like like uh, Steve Vai. You, you know, you, you never reach it. But they're not not sounding like <laughs> any any guy other. You know, they're playing well, like they do. That's the only sorry. thing they do. And that's one that's one thing that I learned with the years. That you know, okay, I can't play like these guys. I have to play like I do. And once you realize that, I think you can relax and <laughs> enjoy your kind of playing. Yes. And, and that's not like any advice I've been given. It's like uh, uh, something I learned through the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't be <laughs> be these guys. I have to be myself. And right. yeah, so that's also a thing that I got to do now on this album. Uh, and I know, think too, it shows too. If you are, uh, you know. We could all try to play like Richie Blackmore, but in the end, it shows that you're playing like Richie Blackmore. Yeah, so yeah, and like, just a copy, just just a copy. Sure. You need to find your own sound, and what do you like? And and if you move in that right direction, good things will happen. And another thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, getting back to how what track was the as far as guitar playing, the hardest for you to play? Uh, okay. Uh, well, nothing is that difficult, really, because I play like, <laughs> it's like by my guitar style. It's, it's my guitar playing, so it's not really that difficult just for me. But, uh, you know, I... Uh, Sinners and Saints, I think that went quite fast, so it, I, I, <laughs> I had to be like really warmed up in my fingers. Mm. Uh, but but uh, yeah, it, like I told you, it's it's my kind of guitar playing, so so it's it went quite quite easily. It would be difficult to me to to try to do you know another guitarist album and try to imitate it or or learn it. But this is my this is how I how I sound. Sure. And uh, I also wanted to ask you, uh, what's the best way to get merchandising from the band and to get okay, a solid we have to get, CD? Yeah, we we have to get that thing thing going. We have Border and Red Eye Music that this is like our our distributor round, and they should be global global. But I I don't think they were. Uh, they didn't see this coming, you know. We, we have uh, uh, people all, all around the globe are asking me and emailing me. We need, we want this record. <laughs> How do we get? It? So it, it's not really working right now. So after the holidays, I'm gonna contact them and get the album out. 
you know, we need to get it to Brazil, like we need to get get it to the States, to, to yeah, UK. Same. People are like emailing me every day. We want your record, but we can't find it. So I'm I'm on it. I'm on it. And also speaking of the US, I wanted to ask you as far as your tour plans. Um, do you feel a trip to the States will be forthcoming? Yes, 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 of course. That that's our main goal. That's like a, 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 you know, <laughs> uh, we're all always laughing about this, but that's uh, I told the guys I'm 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 forming a band now. We're going to the states. That's what I told the guys. So so that's like <laughs> our main goal to get to to the states. And uh, lastly, I wanted to ask you if you could give yeah. a message to the Remedy fans, what would that message be? Well. I hope you 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 get the chance to see us live soon. We are eagerly waiting to get on stage. So so hopefully we we will meet you all very soon. And uh, we can't wait. We can't wait. We're loving this journey, and uh, we have a we're already now having a good time. But we're just getting started. So buckle up. We're coming. Excellent. And I wanted to thank you for taking time to speak with me. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, my friend. Thank you very much. And, and uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And uh, email me information on that guitar. I will. I will. Thank you very much, my friend. And you have a great thank rest of your Thank you very much. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.